Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Autogefühl and welcome to Amsterdam. We're here today to show you the latest version of the T6, the Volkswagen T6.1. Well, let's get right down to it. The T6 made a pretty big splash when it launched, but that was a while ago now. And I think a lot of enthusiasts are more than keen to hold out until we get to the T7, so we can start seeing things like a full electric lineup. So has enough actually been changed on this car with the launch of the 6.1 to justify you upgrading if you already have a T6 or getting one if you're thinking of getting into the game or waiting for that T7 when it eventually turns up in about two years time. Well, the changes may be subtle, but they are there. So we're gonna take a much closer look and let you know what we think of them. Well, I have to be honest with you. When they announced the latest version of the T6, I was more than a little concerned. Why? Well, I think they did a very nice styling job on the T6. And there's always a little bit of a worry when it's a facelift year and not a full revision that in order to make a bold statement that customers recognize as something new and different, a lot of that design goes by the wayside. Well, I think Volkswagen have done a nice job of managing to refresh the design without taking away what made the T6 so popular. Let's not forget, this is a commercial platform. So the trick is to design something that's gonna look perfectly acceptable as a commercial vehicle, but still perfectly respectable when you want to have it as a family car. Well, look at what's happened here. We have a much bolder, you could argue, simpler, bigger design at the front. So real accentuated features with these chrome strips and a bigger, bolder grille. And that integrates really nicely with this new headlight design. We now have LED daytime running lights and full optional LED headlights as well. 4 meters 90 or 192 inches in length. There's not a huge amount that's gone on in the way of change of the design of the side. And I have to say, I think that's a really great thing. The two-tone color scheme you may remember was introduced back with the T6. And given how large the side of this is for a passenger car, it does a really efficient job of breaking up that massive space. Clearly you can't mess with the structure because it's a commercial vehicle and therefore load space has been optimized throughout. So this to me does a really nice job of saying to anybody looking at this car, okay, it's a family car. It's not here for deliveries. Now to go along with that, you can get the wheels at base in 16 inch steel or they go all the way up to these and they are of course 18 inch alloys. New for the 6.1, there's a range of different brand new wheels you can go for and some new color options too. So anyone who's a real aficionado will know that you are driving the latest model. For those who aren't quite that particular, well, I still think there's an awful lot to like about the side of this car. It's nicely pulled together. There's just enough styling detail in it to make you feel that attention's been paid, but it all speaks to its practical use. And of course, we all know where that starts getting really serious, and that's round at the back. Well, now we get round to the rear, and as you can see, other than the chrome trim, the design here has stayed pretty much faithful to the T6, and no bad thing for doing it. Now, obviously, this is where the rubber meets the road in terms of the use of these vehicles. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I own the Volkswagen Chiron at home. I have three children and sometimes that can be a little frustrating because I can tell you that three children plus their friends plus football plus activities plus camping equipment 
plus, plus, plus. There are many, many times when I wish I had one of these. When you're deciding what it is you want to buy, I think the important question to be asking yourself really practically is what are you going to be using it for most? The Chiran is spot on perfect, or the Alhambra if you like the Seat version, if what you want to do for the vast majority of your time is just transport five people. But you soon start running into problems when you do use that seven seat capacity, not least it isn't that much fun riding in the back of the thing. Now, the main difference that you get when you move up to this commercial vehicle is the amount of actual real usable space that you have. You might be looking at this boot saying, well, there's not a huge amount of room back there, but this car has come on a long way since earlier versions. And as you can see down here, we now have runners for these rear seats. The advantage of that meaning that I can have exactly as much space as I want, either for those rear seat passengers or for what I'm putting back here. And that's without needing to worry about the application of these seats. And if I look down here, I can see how I can go about accessing some of those features. So look at this. I mean, that really is pretty effortless, isn't it? The nice thing about a commercial base for a vehicle is that everything is just designed to work. So you're gonna get less whistles, less bells, but an awful lot of effort has gone into the 6.1 to make it feel as much like a car as it can. In short, I would say the emphasis is, if you want to go with the closest to a car driving experience you can get, clearly the Chiran's gonna be better for that. But the compromise and the difference gets smaller and smaller each time, including the difference of fuel efficiency, which we'll come on to a little later. But look at that, look at that vast amount of room. Let's take a walk around the side and see what happens to that space in the rear. I think the most significant thing that you notice about the T6 or the 6.1 as it is now, are really the practical applications of this car. There are so many different ways in which you can configure it to get the most out of this space. Just one example of that would be the way in which you can spin these chairs. That might seem like something you're not gonna be using that much, but if you're traveling with friends or children, it's really, really nice to be able to set up and actually eat some food with them. Now, <laughs> what do you think, Thomas? Is this gonna work? I hope so. Have faith. I, I'm feeling good about this. Uh, so, this, I'm happy to see. It looks to me rather like a 1990s Dell server. What do you think? That probably dates me a little bit. But look at the practical application that we have here. Cup holders, fully movable, and the magic touch is this. Now, it's a very small thing, but you know what? Like most of the other details on this car, an awful lot of time and feedback has gone into making all of these features just right to be incredibly practical and useful. And when you don't want them, they all but magically disappear. Now the load space in this car, in the short wheelbase version, is 2.8 meters. To give you a sense of exactly how much room that is, I'm gonna suggest that Thomas comes round to the back again. And I'm gonna rotate the seat back around so you can see just how much room we have. Look at that. Now the nice thing about that is you really can very realistically fit as many people back here and equipment as you could want to take a decent trip in. And as much as I love my Chiran, well, every time I sit in one of these, I'm more than a little bit envious. So you're traveling to where you're trying to get to, and unfortunately it's pouring down with rain. Well, not only is there a solution for that, but you can sit here and actually enjoy spending time just hanging out in the vehicle. And as I mentioned earlier, everything here is adjustable. That means that you really do have lots of opportunity to put things exactly where you want them to be. As you can see, if I have more load space in the back, I can move this bench right the way forwards and then maximize my legroom if not. So there are so many practical applications for this car. Well, obviously all of that's gonna come at a price and that's something we're gonna to get to a little bit later on. 
So let's take a look and see if anything has changed underneath the hood. Well, of course, the glory days of having your engine mounted in the rear of your car have thankfully long since gone, but there have been lots of changes since those days, not least of which is the new lineup for the 6.1. And I can tell you that all of the available engines are two litre turbo diesels and they are all Euro 6D temp. The engines go all the way from a 90 horsepower right up to the most powerful one which you're looking at right now and that's 199 horsepower. That's going to be paired with anything from a five-speed manual all the way up to, as we have here, a seven-speed DSG. Well, having spent an awful lot of our time recently looking at some fairly high-powered cars, it does please me more than a little bit to go back to looking at one where there's still extra space in there for an engine. I don't know, what do you think, Volkswagen? Time for an R model? Maybe. Let's take a closer look inside. Well, as you can see, the key is a fairly standard affair. Door entrance looks and feels nice and solid. Now, I don't know if you saw Thomas's static review, but he was so enthusiastic about the sound of this door opening and shutting, I had to try it for myself. Well, Thomas might have a, full, a, a better attuned sense of hearing than I do. I can't detect how that is nicer than the T6, but I will say it's all very pleasingly solid. And that's really important when you're talking about an adaption from a commercial vehicle. You don't want to feel like the vehicle was an afterthought. You want to feel like it was really finished with quality and the passenger in mind. And right from the moment you open this door, that's certainly the impression that you get. You have a really nice mix of materials here, but they're all very practical. So nice and easy to wipe down and keep clean. Massive amounts of storage area, as you would expect for this class of vehicle, and all really nicely designed to keep your stuff exactly where you want it to be. But there are still some nice quality elements in the design. Just to let you know, this is something that you should feel excited about owning. As with other Volkswagen cars, there are three basic standard trims you can get, the trend line, the comfort line, and the high line. This that you're now looking at is the comfort line, so the middle of the three available and on offer. As you can see, there's an awful lot of attention to detail being put into making this feel like a quality prospect. So before you even sit in the vehicle, it really does resonate with design quality. Now, talking of design quality, Big fan of these seats, they're very nicely put together. They look and feel exactly the job. Now, you are gonna get a fair bit of plastic effect. This is, after all, still a commercial body. And if you look down at the floor, there's no denying that that is the DNA of the vehicle. I'm a fan of that. It's easier to keep clean. It's really practical. And every time you hop in and out of one of these things, you really do get the sense of the hours of work that have gone into making this ergonomically as perfect as possible for its commercial customers. Why? Well, obviously they put an awful lot more miles on their vehicles than a standard owner does. So those beneficial features are still baked into the design. But obviously the customers for this vehicle are not commercial customers. So have Volkswagen done enough to make you recognize that once you sit in the cockpit? Well, this is one area in which there have been some significant changes and upgrades. Let's take a closer look and see what you think. Now we come to the heart of the differences with the 6.1 over the 6. And the first thing that I'm sure you have noticed is this brand new steering wheel. Well, I say brand new, you may know it from the new Passat and the T-Roc. 
but it is brand new for this car and it really suits it well. These controls are very nicely laid out, so they're very intuitive and comfortable to use while driving. And the steering wheel feels great. You might think, ah, but if it's designed for a smaller car, is it gonna work so well in a larger one? I can absolutely tell you that it feels very, very nice indeed. And there's a very good reason for that. The steering has now been changed, so it's electromechanical. Why would they do that? Well, it's because there are a raft of new assistance systems now available for this car, and you have to have an electromechanical steering system in order to activate them. Clearly, a lot of those systems, for example, lane assist, utilize the car's ability to take over control of the steering in that way. So that makes a significant difference, not only to getting yet more car-like features available on this larger class of vehicle, but also to change the feeling of the driving profile slightly. Now, for the next significant difference, we're gonna to need to turn the car on. This is the new digital infotainment suite. So these are optional. We have, let me just turn this off. We have a 10.25 inch driver's display over here, fully digital. And over here, we have the top version of the infotainment system, and that is 9.5 inches across. Now, here you can choose between 6.5 is the entry-level model, or up to the top end, and that's what this is, and this comes in at 9.5 across. Now, I suspect a lot of that's gonna be in personal taste. In styling terms, this looks very nice indeed, and you can clearly go through a huge range of settings to make sure that this looks and feels more or less exactly as you would want it. Well, I'm pretty sure you know me by now. I'm a more older guy in my taste and styling, and in a car like this in particular, what I really like are knobs and dials. I mean, look at this. This is the air conditioning down here. Thomas, do you have that in shot, or should we come to that a little later? Uh, a little bit later, please. A little later on the air conditioning. I can't ever be quite convinced by this system here, not least if you have a look, you can notice this piano black edge. And I think the light is being kind to the reflection at the moment, but I can assure you there is a very nice fingerprint track between the up and down buttons on that. And the whole surrounding area as we try to turn the volume up or down as we're driving around in this. So. If you are somebody who really, really is bothered by clean aesthetics within a car, I think this is absolutely fantastic. For me, practicality always comes first. This car is designed first and foremost with practicality in mind. So I'm still not completely convinced by the need for a digital cockpit, and I really want my volume button, but that could just be personal taste. On the upside, the cabin finish is excellent throughout. The mix of materials is really, really good. There's a nice contemporary feel. This gear stick, which we know from the previous version, is still every bit as satisfying to use and makes the most of the space available to it. So everything about sitting here just reinforces that feeling of quality, which is exactly what you want from this car when you drive it. If there is one good reason to go with the larger infotainment system, it's this. Now, I've always been a big fan of the way in which Volkswagen have integrated this rear camera technology. It always feels seamless and effortless. There are nicer looking ones available, but in terms of practical use and an easy way to digest the information that you're presented with, I think you have to go to quite a lot of effort to find something that is more usable. Now, a lot of people who've never driven one of these before assume that because it's a bigger van, it's harder to maneuver. I promise you it's not. As a commercial vehicle, one of the most important design elements is that as a big box, you can always tell whereabouts the four corners are. So as nice as that reversing camera is, I have to tell you, you will be very happy to discover how little you find you actually need to rely on it. I think there's a really nice job been done here of integrating the heating and cooling controls. Now, clearly any car design is going to be a matter of compromise and you can see <laughs> what lost the competition here. There really is nothing you can do about that without sacrificing a lot of available space lower down. So once you get to know this system and how it works, you can fairly easily get straight to the bits you want to 
which in our case, I can assure you is the air conditioning without actually needing to look at it. And that's really important. But in the meantime, the finishing here is really nice, very easy to navigate, just enough in the way of selection and not too much. If you guys haven't picked it up by now, I have to tell you one of the things I love about vehicles that are based on commercial vehicles is the amount of simple thought that's gone into them that sometimes appears to be completely missing on cars. Now, this not only has an inductive charging pad, but what's a little harder for you to see is that in this phone pocket, just where the tips of my fingers are, are two soft rubber gills that then gently compress down on the top of this phone. That really nicely holds it in place. So even over bumps, the phone is gonna stay exactly where it's supposed to and it won't get damaged. Just above that, we have two USB-C charging and interaction ports. Nice to see that modern feature included here. And of course, a 12 volt charge point. So you're already up to date and ready to plug in. Coming up top here, more of those lovely features from commercial vehicles. A 12 volt charge point here, an amply big enough space to leave a tablet. Although I have to say, if you feel the heat that's on this dashboard right now, I'm not quite sure you'd want to put a tablet in there. Two cup holders, one either side, a really great extra touch. And look at this additional built-in storage. A great ledge here for some documents and one for pens and loose change down here. Do we still have much in the way of a glove box? Well, okay, no, not really at all, but enough for the service manual and you have plenty of everyday storage above. I'm five foot 10 or 178 centimeters, but I do have a particularly long torso. So you can say that this would be the experience of somebody up to about six feet in height. Now that experience is good for wherever you sit in this car. So there is more than sufficient headspace for you wherever you're located. And it's not just that. We also have these particularly nice, I say that because Thomas is quite drawn to these, lit, I don't know why, apparently he likes to spend a lot of time looking at himself because while I'm of, driving. Because of the woman's. What woman's is this, Thomas? Women's are driving their child probably to school. They just want to see themselves sometimes. So now I think I understand properly. What Thomas is saying is that while I'm driving, what he likes to do is look in his lit passenger rear view mirror at women driving their children to school. So at least you have that opportunity if you're Thomas. But for the rest of us, they're still quite useful now and then. And we also, for our comfort, have these sturdy, nicely robust, but also conveniently small enough armrests. Why conveniently enough Small, well, I have to tell you, on more than one occasion, I have been driving one of these things. It has been throwing down with rain and all I wanted to do was just get in the back to pick something out. Well, thanks to a little bit of thoughtful design, you can pass between these fairly easily. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal until it really is that big of a deal. So thank you for thinking that one through. I really personally appreciate it. You might think that this is a slightly unconventional place to start a driving test, and you'd be right. This is a single track farm road running alongside one of the larger canals here in Amsterdam. But I think it's actually an excellent place to start to get an impression of this car. Why? Well, if I think about the first thing that this car makes me want to do, it's load up the kids, a load of equipment, and take it off camping. And camping always means, or it does if you're doing it right, taking the car into places you wouldn't necessarily take a car. Well, this isn't the roughest terrain, but it is a really good place to be able to show you how a little bit of uncomfortable handling works on this car. Well, as in keeping with the raft of other nice features on the 6.1, because it's a commercial vehicle, everything has been maximized for how this thing is standardly gonna be used by its commercial customers. And trust me when I tell you, commercial vans are not usually driven in a particularly sympathetic way or over particularly sympathetic terrain. So a little bit of rough ground is a great place to get an idea of how things are situated. Well, I'm happy to tell you they're really comfortable. 
So, okay, you're always gonna lose a little bit of that car feel when you move up to a commercial body, but you do make an awful lot of gains. Yes, there's the space, there's the flexibility, but there's also the drivability. They're called the bus for a reason, you know, and they certainly feel like they could drive anywhere and more or less over anything. And in my time, I've taken these things to some fairly challenging locations and I've never had a problem with them. For me and my taste, they are just small enough to be very much usable the way you would a larger car, but they are big enough to provide you with everything that you actually want. Now, important caveat, the one that we're driving has the larger of the engines. So it's a two litre turbo diesel, 199 horsepower, and it's twinned with a seven speed DSG. So in terms of getting the absolute most out of your driving experience, this is as close as you're gonna be able to do to getting this thing to behave like the car that you left when you moved into it. So what does that all translate to? Well, obviously you have a really nicely elevated driving position. I've got a fantastic overview of the road and really great all around visibility. Now, if I'm sounding a bit like a salesman, I'm pretty sure you've guessed by now, I am a fan of these things, but you have to be prepared to make some compromise. This is first and foremost a van. I have to tell you, I like vans. I am certain that a lot of people don't. Well, please, before you start writing angry comments, if you're not somebody who's looking at a van, then before you consider this, please check out the Chiron or the Alhambra, or if you like SUVs, there are some really great options to go with in this price bracket you're never going to get a car's driving experience out of a van. But as we move out of our camping environment and onto a more natural, regular driving environment, which is just a standard road, let's see quite how much of that experience we can get out of the vehicle. Well, I have to tell you, the gearbox is very smooth and easy. I'm really enjoying the new steering wheel. It's incredibly sympathetic. Let's see what the acceleration's like in this bus. There you are. Speed limit 70 on this road, and there we have it. Now, not only was that extremely pleasant, but I think you could hear when you listened, it didn't sound like the engine was going to a huge amount of effort, and I certainly wasn't using everything that it had. So, as long as you're comparing this with a van-like experience, it's comfortable, it's smooth, it's easy, the DSG gearbox is great, and the larger engine provides the oomph that you need. I would never consider this with the smallest engine going, but if you're interested in fuel economy, the difference between the smallest and the large in driving experience should be around about two liters per 100 kilometers driven. So still, if efficiency is your thing, you're gonna want a slightly milder engine. But I have to tell you, here's where things get very interesting for me. According to Volkswagen, they should be ready with a full electric version of this by around about 2020, 2021. Now, at the moment, there is an opportunity for you to have one of these things redesigned as an all-electric if that's what you want. But they're not cheap to buy in the first place, and then you really have to consider, is this what the car was designed for? For me, that's a clear no. If you wait for two years, you'll be able to get something that is perfectly designed for that, fit for purpose. I think if you want one of these today, well, for my money, you'd be crazy to look at that as an option. There are other choices to go for. This works best in the format for which it's designed, which is that really tried, tested, and now more compliant engine, the two liter turbo diesel. So, steering's great. Brakes are ab absolutely as good as you need them to be. Gearbox is superb. Visibility is nice. Seating position's very comfortable. Basically, I'm getting everything that I would expect to be able to get from a van drive, but a lot more besides. Now, in terms of this infotainment system, well, I think you've already guessed, I really am not the biggest fan in the world of needing digital, especially on a commercial type vehicle, but it gives me everything I need in a very effortless, straightforward manner. So, in terms of the drive, the comfort, and the all around experience, so far, I'm going two thumbs up. So, talking about that acceleration again, here we are pulling onto a highway. More than enough power to get me up to speed with no problem at all. Again, everything very, very nice and comfortable. Now going 100 kilometers per hour. 
Thomas, I've got to tell you, I think the road noise is excellent. It is excellent, very silent inside. I've driven in an awful lot of cars that are much smaller and should be producing much less noise than this does. The wind noise, okay, we are nicely protected by big barriers here, so possibly not the fairest example, but still, there's almost none. Now, we have a huge raft of extra assistance systems that are available on the 6.1 than were possible with the 6. A large chunk of that is because the electromechanical steering that's now been put into this system. Can I notice the difference between this and the predecessor? Well, I think I'd be hard pushed to be able to point it out. The balance is really good. And think about the benefits that come with having this system in place. Not least, now I was talking about the wind noise and effect earlier on. Okay, there really isn't much wind today. And even if there was, we have massive sidings to this motorway to stop me experience anything particularly bad from it. But new on this model, you can now get a wind assist. And that means that if the vehicle detects it's being buffeted around, and if you've ever driven one of these while towing a caravan, you will know exactly what that feels like then all of the technical assistance will kick in to help stabilize the vehicle as you're driving along. Now, honestly, I've never tried that feature in a car, so I can't speak to how well it works, but it sounds like a good idea, and I'd be really interested to give it a go. So we've managed to establish that the road noise is good, the wind noise is minimal, but there's one thing that I would imagine is almost impossible to do anything about once you start getting into vans, and that is the rollover created by that higher side. So, we've got a nice turn off the motorway coming up now. We should be able to try that at a little bit of speed and we'll find out what the rollover feels like when we're coming around it. I'm only traveling the same speed as everybody else on this road, which is 100 kilometers per hour. What do you think, Thomas? Hmm, mm, says Thomas. Try it. He's too busy checking out mothers driving their children. <laughs> Okay, well, sadly we didn't quite attain the speed that I wanted, so we're not really showing you quite the pitch that I wanted to be able to. Maybe we can get a bit more power now. You should be able to see there. You have a reasonable amount more, a few degrees, than you would expect from a car, but pleasingly not bad at all. If you're not used to driving a van, really, I can't stress enough, the biggest change and difference that you notice is if you take an exit ramp off a motorway driving a speed you would ordinarily drive in an A4, well, you're going to be in for a nasty shock when that corner comes up quite a lot quicker than you were expecting. So, it's good on the highway, it's good off-road, how does it behave around town? Well, come on, what do you want me to say? The number one use of the vehicle that this is based on is as a commercial delivery vehicle. And where do they spend 90% of their time? Delivering goods around town. So it's exactly as you would expect it to be, which is to say it's really easy. Higher up vehicles make for very pleasant drives indeed when you're out around town. The gearbox is great. You've got more than enough nip in the engine. As I say, we have the larger one and that really helps and the handling of the car is superb. So I think a fairer question is, how does it compare to its competitors and its predecessor? Well, I think I really would be quite hard pushed to notice a significant difference in terms of how the steering behaves. Everything here is very pleasing indeed. Versus the competition, well, again, Volkswagen have been doing this a long time. And I think over time, this car has more or less been I'm loath to use the word perfected, but I think you know what I mean. It's very nice indeed. So if you have to do lots of driving around town, it's almost a no-brainer. So put the three together and what do you end up with? If you've got lots of people and stuff that you need to transport, you may just be looking at your ideal car. So there's really only one component left to talk about, and that's the price. So now we have to talk about price. 
The most important thing to decide if you are considering buying one of these vehicles is whether you are ready, understand, are interested in or prepared to deal with the fact that it is a commercial platform. Everything that is good about this vehicle is because of that fact. But all of that comes at a price. The entry level on buying the multivan, and that is the passenger version of this vehicle, is going to start from 38,000. If you want to get this one, which is well equipped, you're looking at closer to 60,000 euro. Now, that does include tax. And before you go crazy and switch off and say that's too much money for this, you really have to consider what you're buying. Bear in mind, you can spend an awful lot more if you start looking at the fully equipped camper versions. So here's my conclusion. I really like this van. The T6 I thought was fantastic. The 6.1, well, you know what? The passenger assistance systems are definitely a good inclusion. So I'm happy to see them going there. The styling has definitely been sharpened and tweaked a little bit. Personally, I'm most excited for when we get to the T7 to see what can be achieved with the fully electric platform. It is a huge amount of money, but then it's also a huge amount of car. In terms of what this will offer you for residual value, there are many cheaper options out there, but they won't hold their value anything like as well as this does. And it's going to give you an awful lot of happy driving. Whether or not you personally think that that justifies the sticker price, well, that's something only you can decide. But if you think you can live with that and you're used to the idea of the fact that it's not going to be a car, well, you're going to get a huge amount of practicality and actually an awful lot of driving pleasure out of this vehicle. I would definitely recommend that you go with the larger engine and for me, for getting the best out of it, also the seven speed DSG. It's just effortless to use and it's really road tested. So a great piece of kit if you can afford the price. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as we've enjoyed making it and we hope We'll see you again soon.